Now, with effect from January the 9th, 2023, Nigeria Central Bank has concluded plans to impose restrictions on cash withdrawals. For details of the plan as laid out by the Central Bank, gains and possible challenges of the new monetary policy against the backdrop of the population of Nigerians outside the financial inclusion bracket and infrastructure for a cashless economy, we are now being joined by financial analyst Fola Daniels. Good to have you and welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, now let's start with a little bit of history. So India made a similar move in 2016, and it was pretty detrimental to the economy. Uh, you know, we saw reduced industrial output, the rupee crashed, uh, several more things uh, threw the Indian economy into a spiral. Are we going to see some parallel uh, effects and parallel impacts happening locally? Well, if we don't improve on manufacturing and exports to make sure that we improve our balance of trade payments, yes, that is likely going to happen. But I don't think that's the intention of the Central Bank of Nigeria right now, or that's the primary focus. But if we don't want the narrative crash as much as the rupee did, then we need to jack up manufacturing, exporting and make sure that whatever is not important, non-essential products should not be imported. If we do that, then we will not experience that kind of crash that India experienced. Uh, right now, I just think that the intention of the CBN is to make it more difficult for people to move a lot of cash around. And that's what I think they're creating all the measures around for now. Very well said, Fola. Now, of course, this has been met with different reactions. POS operators are saying they plan to go on strike because this would basically render them without, you know, a source of livelihood. And then some transport, um, those in the transport sector are actually hailing this, saying that it's going to help to um, ensure better security for them. But I'm just wondering about the timing of this. It might have, they might have the best intentions, but this timing and the timeline provided, could it, be more, could it do more harm than good? I, I agree with you that the timeline is going to do more harm than good. And the reason being that the electronic channels available for payment are for people who seem to have some form of education. And that means that the people, the regular average person on the market will not have an alternative if they're limited to daily transactions of 20,000 Naira. And the bus conductor, the people who just want to collect their cash, keep it some way, will not be able to do anything. If we had improved on the reliability of the electronic channels, it would be a better time and the time in the short time, it would not be a problem. But we still have a lot of issues with the reliability of electronic channels. So that makes it more difficult. And more importantly, we have just in, we're just about to introduce new Naira notes. So you then start to ask yourself questions like, what is the essence of the 500 Naira notes? What's the, what is the essence of the 1000 Naira notes? If you're just going to introduce them and you're asking banks not to put more than 200 Naira in the their ATM machines. So clearly, as I suggested in one of my articles, we don't need the 200, 500, and 1,000 error notes to achieve the ultimate aim, which is to reduce the cash in circulation and also make sure that it's difficult for people to move cash around. So the timing isn't much of a problem compared to what is on ground to make this really work. So it's not really about the timing, it's about what is on ground to make it work. Even if we were to do it next year, or if we were to do it in two years time, the regular market woman, how is this person going to move cash around? This person probably does 1 million naira a day, 2 million, some of them even more. How are they going to move their money around? How are they going to accept payments from their, from their customers? They don't rely on transfers. Some of them don't because they can't. Some of them don't rely on mobile banking because they don't even know how to use it. So how exactly have you taken care of these people? So it's back to what we wanted to achieve. We wanted financial inclusion. But with this policy, we're going to exclude a lot of the people that ought to be included. Absolutely. And, you know, in the context of that, some are even saying, going as far as saying that all this is is a tax on the use of cash because you can still draw larger amounts if you're ready to foot the bill. Um, so, again, it seems like the, wealth, the wealthy are going to be able to sort of gloss over this. But um, you, in light of the picture you've just painted, what are the immediate things that you believe are going to transpire on the ground uh, as, as soon as this policy goes into effect? 
So the first thing I think will happen, as I wrote recently, is that a number of people who do a large volume of cash will have to start holding their cash. More people are likely going to be afraid. I mean, if I do 2 million, 3 million euro on a daily basis, and the bank tells me I can't do more than 20,000 euro cash in a day, my first response would be to start holding back my cash. This is my money. If you're telling me I can hold more than this and I don't all, even with transfers, there's a limit to what I can do on a daily basis. Some people can do more than 500,000. Some people can do more than a million or 5 million. So if all my daily transactions exceed all the limits that you have created, people are going to start holding cash at home. Now, the other consequence, when people start holding cash or when people start carrying more cash around is that robbery is likely to increase because now people know people hold cash at home and they carry more cash around. So it's going to also be difficult to send cash to some people. For example, e-commerce is thriving right now. If it's difficult for me to get much more than 20,000 Naira on a daily basis or 100,000 Naira on a weekly basis, now it's going to be very difficult for me to sell from a distant location or to sell remotely. That's how we survived during COVID. So this policy is likely going to impact largely on the way we've done e-commerce in the last five years. And unfortunately, as I've said, I think more people will carry cash and there will be increase in robbery as a result of that. Indeed, what you're saying actually reminded me of what happened in Lebanon when a woman went to rob the bank to help her sister f to get a cancer treatment. But for I'm also wondering, you know, re recently, recently with what we've seen with the redesign on one hand and now this limitation, do you have any further expectations since one of the objectives that's being suggested is that this is also supposed to help with the issue of vote buying? Do you think we're going to see further actions from CBN outside of these two latest ones? Absolutely. Absolutely. I did say that one of the best ways the CBN should have gone about this is to not bother redesigning the Naira. We were going to save more money if we decided to scrap the 200, 500 and 1000 Naira notes because the cost of printing them, the cost of distribution, the cost of insuring the cash is a lot much more than the value of the Naira itself. So what I expect is that now the 200 Naira is the limit on the ATM machines. The big, you know how it is. People want to go to parties and show off. They want to show that they are big and stuff like that. So if people have access to 500 and 1,000 Naira notes, they're going to be like the big men. I'm afraid that most likely for the CBN to have decided that only 200 Naira should be in ATM machines, then they definitely intend to limit accessibility to 500 and 1,000 Naira notes. Once they limit that accessibility, more people will hoard whatever 500 and 1,000 Naira notes they are able to gain access to. So the parallel markets will have a upper end again, as it has always had in recent years. So I, I just think that we're going to have more troubles on our hands with the way they've gone about this policy. My own suggestion would have been completely scrap 200, 500, and 1,000 euro notes because in the US and the UK, in Europe generally, the highest denomination is usually a 100 naira bill or a 100 dollar bill or a 100 pounds. You know, you don't get more than a 100 denomination. So just scrap 200, scrap 500, scrap, then increase or improve the reliability of the electronic channels speak with the telecoms companies because that depends largely on the telecoms operators. They are the ones who provide the internet services. They provide the USSD codes. If you don't talk to them and ask them to increase reliability of their channels, we're going to have more problems on our hands. Then lastly, you know, sometimes it's the customers that bear the brunt when their money hangs. The bank doesn't take responsibility. The person who is supposed to receive the money says, I haven't received the money. So who bears the brunt? Customer has to wait seven days and in some cases never get their money back. If you don't take care of all of these issues, limiting cash accessibility is just a punitive measure on the people. So increase the channels of transfer before you limit cash accessibility. That's what should be done.
Thank you for that insight. Now, in a broader uh, look at this, uh, earlier we spoke about India. I also want to look at the example of Zimbabwe when we see the impact okay. of uh, what monetary policies can do to a country when they are a reflection of the politics of the day. Uh, now, very briefly, we just have about a minute left. Uh, can you give us an outline of the dangers of monetary policy being a, a response to the political climate? Okay, so when it's a response to the political climate, you're going to have an immediate or short-term achievement. Your short-term achievement, meaning that, for example, as it is in the case of Nigeria, you can limit vote buying. You can make sure that corruption during the election is limited, movement of cash is limited and all of that. But after the election, it's going to largely impact on businesses. There are too many people. We're not a credit-driven society. Uh, we're just moving gradually to the electronic channels you would think that the electronic channels have been around for a while but the volume of transactions done electronically in nigeria compared to cash is largely insignificant so we're going to achieve the short-term result of not being able to move large volume of cash around before during and immediately after the election but that is being short-sighted because the bigger picture is to improve the results for the economy and trust me we're going to score a small goal for the election purposes and actually score an own goal against the economy of the nation if we don't improve accessibility of uh, funds without cash very well said financial analyst for la daniel thank you so much for joining us on newsday we appreciate your time and analysis